Hello, everybody. Let's uh, let's make some progress. <laughs> it's been, it's been a long morning. We're nearly getting to lunch. Let let us not delay you. <laughs> um, I, I my name's Brian Wynn. I'm part of the Inspire Project, and um, pleased to moderate rather than host this particular session about is PCP a good investment opportunity. Um, I'm shortly about to ask the panel to introduce themselves, but before I do that, could you help us to understand who you are in the audience? Could I ask you to raise your hand if you're from the industry side of things? Are you, are you, you know, an industry body? Hands up. <laughs> yeah, yes, you count, Andrew. <laughs> hands up if you're a public procurer, a public body. And um, please hands up if you are a potential entrepreneur or investor. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Gentlemen, you have colleagues in the audience. Healthcare providers. You could be careful. Oh, healthcare providers. Yeah. Yes, oh, I knew something. And healthcare providers, please. You see, that wasn't a good. That, that wasn't a very good suggestion. <laughs> so, could I just turn to the panel and, starting on my right at Rosanna, just a few words about yourself, please, and your organisation, not yourself, your organisation. My organisation. <laughs> okay, I think that you well, you heard already the name of our organisation, Aquas, the Agencia de Qualitatis Evaluación Sanitaria de Catalunya. We are an agency right now. Um, uh, well, we, have, uh, we belong to the Department of Health of, 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 the, of Catalonia. And uh, among a lot of things we do regarding assessment and innovation, observative innovation in healthcare, what we also do is boosting uh, in, inside the, within the Department of Health the adoption of public procurement of innovation and pre-commercial procurement. I would say this is our main role right now for this session. <laughs> Thank you, Rosanna. Philip? Thanks. So um, I work for Invenium Innovation. We started the company a few years ago with the basic question if, of um, is the way innovation is done actually innovative? And surprisingly enough, it actually isn't. It's innovation is still being done the very much the same way it was 30 or 40 years ago. And we believe that, is, uh, that the circumstances actually have changed a lot, but the model hasn't. So uh, people are much more mobile in organizations. So the whole case for internal innovation has gone away. I mean, now people leave after a few years, so it's no longer that their IP is actually your IP. So um, there are other things that drive the need for interconnection with the outside world in the innovation uh, process. And what we have actually done and what we are doing is we are connecting these worlds. So we are like the same thing as a headhunter, but we're not looking for people, we're looking for technologies, so we will work with corporations, public bodies, hello, anybody really, and, uh, and look for uh, technologies that fit their particular need, both on the IP side and in the technology uh, product side. So we're like um, a tech hunter company, if you want. Um, also to mention, we are um, half Israeli, half uh, Spanish, so that's where we... Uh, that uh, Israel and Europe is where we sc uh, source most of our technologies. And that's for the healthcare market, especially medical device, and, um, and also for uh, energy and, cre and green tech technologies. Thank you. Thank you, Philip. Bon dia, Todd. Um, so I'm probably sort of the odd one out in that my organization is me in this case, <laughs> so it's more about the person. Um, I do several things, but I'm here in my quality as an incubator and um, an investor, a uh, small investor, I should say, a more angel, invest, uh, angel investor. Um, the, the big um, disclaimer I have to make here is that I'm probably also the odd one out in that I, I'm absolutely not an e-health expert. Actually, all, all the companies I incubate are general ICT startups, internet startups, or mobile startups. Um, so in that, in that sense, I'm not an expert at all. I'm, I'm looking at this as a very, from a very global investor's perspective. Why is that the end of the presentation? Because it's not my presentation. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll try that again. Little technical difficulty there. Um, this session is, is what, what we've heard today so far is that it looks as though 
PCP in basically in, involves taking innovators, uh, maybe service, maybe technology, maybe both, with service providers, public procurers, to actually achieve some new form of collaboration to make something happen that otherwise would not have happened for everybody's benefit. And when you look at it from an industry point of view, you say, well, this is, this is, I'm being paid to develop something. And we have to ask the question, does PCP represent an attractive investment opportunity? Now, to date, uh, and we're slowly starting to get a critical mass of PCP and PPI cr projects, but there's, there's been very little or no investor activity in this area. And why is this so? And this is going to be a, a, a dialogue session, but let me just give you some background to this, um, because we've been working on this for a year or so now. So let me fill you in with some of the findings we've found, and perhaps they'll act as a, a seed for dialogue. If you look at the degree of match between what investors are looking for and what a PCP project offers, you, it would seem to be quite good, I would propose, because... Investors are looking for a proven market with people who are able to buy. You've got money to spend. Where there isn't any existing competition, because if there was existing competition, there wouldn't be a PCP in the first place. Where the offering has been user-tested, if you like, it's been road-tested by the potential customers, because in a PCP, it's a co-development project. An investor would look for protectable IP, an exploitable IP, and that the business offering has some scalability so that there's an exit plan, most typically a trade sale. And if you match that, oh, and of course that there's money in it, there's a profit to be had. Minor point. Minor point. And in fact, last on the list for that reason. <laughs> if you look at the attributes of a PCP project, by definition, there's a ready-made market with a funded customer. There's no in incumbent supplier, because there's, there's, that's why you've got a project. The customer participates in the development through co-development, and not only that, the customer will actually provide some development funding. Not necessarily all of it, but some of it. The successful supplier owns the IP, and if one public procurer has got a challenge or a problem, isn't it probable that others will have a similar um, challenge or problem in other regions, in other countries? Uh, it may be expressed differently, but... There's a common need, and if someone else has got that need and it's been solved, again, why are you having a PCP? So scalability is likely. In terms of profitability, the sell price of the solution should have been a consideration throughout the project in terms of we're designing this thing, we're building this thing, but can we actually supply it at a price the customer will want to pay? Because if we can't, let's stop now. So I would propose that there's a good match between what investors seek and what procurers are seeking to achieve by mounting a PCP project. So why don't we see more activity in this arena? Here are some of the comments we've already received in our past year. And to do with reference to the attributes of the match versus a PCP project, the, co the overall comment can be expressed as, look, this sounds good, but as investors, we make our own assessment about what the product is and what the service offering is, what the market sector is, how big the market is, and uh, possibility of knocking on to other markets. We do our own assessment. So the fact that you're telling me it's a good match, I'm not taking this at face value. I have to do just as much work as if it was any other, oppo any other opportunity brought to me. Now, is that true? Can, could an investor not take some of that at face value and say, well, here's a PCP, somebody else has done a bit of the due diligence work? Can I invite comments on that? Audience? From, uh, from <laughs> uh, I, at any time from the audience, but primarily from the panel. No, I, don't, I think that is, not, that is not going to work for a couple of reasons. First of all, um, an investor uh, will actually make, always make their own due diligence, and they will ne not take anything for granted. I mean, you know, they will actually look under the stones and see whether the, the thing is real. The other thing is the fact that the due diligence was done by a public body probably doesn't inspire confidence uh, <laughs> either, to be perfectly blunt. Um, it, that that has, a, has not something to do with the quality of the, of, the, of the work done. It has something to do with the perspective. And the perspective of a public body is necessarily different from the one um, from, uh, from an investor's point of view. 
this last point that was there hidden in the corner, uh, whether the, that the, prof, uh, the business should be profitable. I mean, these are typical things where the, where, where the interests are very different. How much profit do you want to allow as a public body? Do you want, want to allow the, the, the private uh, side uh, to make? So this is not – they will never take anything like that for granted, uh, partly because of the source and partly because it's part of the business model not to take anything for granted. So whilst it might not be t taken for granted, doesn't it make the PCP arena – a potentially rich hunting ground. So whilst all the work would happen as well, it's a, it's a target area to look at. Do you want to say something? Yeah, I, well, I was, I was actually going to pick up a little bit on the market uh, size thing, uh, which probably ties into that a little bit. Um, so I think the first, the first important thing to realize is that there's, not, that there's more than one type of investor. I think w when we're saying investors, it seems that we're implying that it's VCs, right, uh, venture capitalists, but those are not the only types of invent investors. I'm, for example, not a VC at all. Um, and different investors have to, are looking for different things. Um, in ICT, I'm not so sure about healthcare, but in ICT, a, a VC is, typically looks for scalability. They, they really want um, a market that has leverage, that has scalability to it. And... Um, that, that, that's something where I see, for example, in this particular area, I see some issues because, um, of course, yes, uh, public procurers, they're, they're, they're big. We're talking about big numbers. They have money. They're motivated to buy, etc. But there are, there are only so many of them in Europe uh, because we're still u talking about Europe. And it's actually even worse than that because we're already sort of assuming that all this works on a European level, but I'm not sure to what degree that is optimistic. Um, I'm not sure whether, you know, I've sold it here, so I'll sell it anywhere in Europe, if that is really a reality. And I think that's something that, that investors will look at. I think, that, I think that's true, actually. I think we've just seen an example of that in the speaker from E Falls, where he said, you know, in America, Philips have got this full system with 700,000 <laughs> clients. In Europe, it's nowhere. So it, it's, um, it, it isn't automatically mappable. Okay, let, let's, let's keep cracking on. Ah, the question you touched on. The market is the public sector. How much is that a disincentive? And the comments we're receiving back are, it's unlikely the public sector will yield the sales margins that will allow a return on investment level that we expect our investments to, to deliver, especially if the public bodies co-funded the development and may have negotiated first adopter prices, low first adopter prices as a result. It, is, is that actually a tangible factor, do you think, for investors? I think that is a, that is a very astute observation, actually. Um, the, I mean, the, the conference, just to be sure, because, yes, we, we, there are very different types of investors. Uh, the title of this was, um, uh, actually, in the English version, I'm pretty sure it, it said venture capital. Here I see the Catalan version, version which is uh, risk uh, uh, capital, which I guess is the same thing, right? I mean, venture capital has a very, very specific set of parameters under which it invests and thinks about, about the world. And what it's looking for is big, big, big hits. Now, in many, in many ways, the, the interests of an investor and an entrepreneur, I mean, a VC investor and an entrepreneur are aligned, but not in all of them. And the particular difference is when it comes to exit. Uh, normally, VCs actually have a bunch of money that they have to invest, and after a few years, they, they, they count how much they got back, but they cannot reinvest money. So it's a one-time thing. So if they basically invest something that gets a, a nice little return that all of us would be happy with, you know, like 20% per year or something that for an investor, that is not a, a, winning, uh, a winning kind of project. It sounds, sounds bizarre, but a venture capital list needs big hits. Um, if there is a public body involved here, um, that, no, that sounds kind of a low, low, it li ro lowers the risk of doing business, but it doesn't necessarily mean there's a big hit. And really, for a venture capitalist, for a successful project, you have to ask whether a public body, if, if, you, if you incubate or if you help along a process like that and the investor makes 20 times their money, all right, 20 times their money, probably the public procurer would probably be fired or, or <laughs> you know, sent to another office um, uh, for, for that, while it's actually a, a huge success. So there is a certain mismatch in what the expectation is and how you measure success. Yeah, yeah I, was, I was very interested in, uh, in Raquel's uh, um, presentation this morning because, um, um, and it very much ties in with this question, I think. If I look, 
when I listened to that presentation as a, as a potential investor, I was going like, 10 legal issues, oops, you know? Um, so I think that there is a potential yes answer to this question. Oh, yes, yes, please Mr. do. <laughs> <laughs> you, you folded your mic down like you weren't going to say anything. I can hear, I can hear my say. <laughs> okay, uh, I, I, I clearly um, I, I cannot disagree with my um, with the speaker I have here on my table because they, this is their opinion and, and they have a perspective from invest, um, either venture capitalist or investor perspective, and this is their perspective. But to me. Uh, as a um, public procurer, um, clearly uh, we are doing a further step that uh, hopefully the investors are looking at us like, okay, let's, let's see what it is. Because a public procurer usually looks for stability, looks for something that is stable, that is sustainable, and that can be deployed in, a, in, in, the, in, in the region or in their area or in their, um, I don't know, in their uh, hospital uh, in a way that you don't put at risk your citizens, your patients, especially if you are a healthcare provider. So that's, uh, um, or the security, not only from, uh, uh, from a healthcare perspective, but also maybe from data security perspective. So that's, uh, it's, uh, it's mandatory. You don't expect uh, in Europe where the, um, the social, um, uh, the healthcare is, uh, is, is, is like, uh, is right for all the citizens that this is somehow put at risk. But it's also the, the, uh, the public sector in healthcare, it's the big buyer for the industry. The 80% of, uh, uh, of the business is, the, is in the public sector. So if we put a small percentage in something that, yes, maybe start to put at risk your stability, but in fact you don't put the innovation as it is a prototype in, already in, in production, but start to look at, uh, transform the public sector in a smart uh, buyer. Um, with a, with a, so why not with a long-term ROI, <laughs> no, return of investment, and, and the vision together is something that maybe uh, will come in a few years' time, Wow, I think that we are making progress in from the public sectors, and I think that we deserve maybe some attention from venture capitalists, that's all. <laughs> Can I pick up on that very briefly? Yes. <laughs> um, because I, I'm, I'm hearing the, the word stability a lot, and sort of uh, uh, guaranteed market stability. Um, to be honest, I don't think those are things that an investor necessarily looks at first. I think an investor looks first at... Um, the team and the opportunity. Mm -hmm. Opportunity is not the same as stability. Um, and, we'll, and they will look at risk and they will, they will assume a certain risk as, as far as it's a known risk. And they will just sort of set a threshold. And, um, so I think stability is actually not really such a factor. Well, we are, we are, we are, I'm mentioning about uh, stability of technology we deploy, no market stability. Eh? Mm -hmm. That's, uh, but by the way, yes, I take this point. Okay, and maybe I just, I just, sorry if I may just jump in there for, with yeah. one comment. The, the question really is, um, when you say you deserve attention from the VC uh, industry or from the investment industry, since we're broadening the scope yeah. a little bit, the question is, is, are they actually the right kind of people to present this to? I mean, uh, when I'm uh, a VC, generally operates. It, it gets a project presented, and the project will have lots of parameters, and one of them is previous funding or public <laughs> finance access that they have received. or you know, that there's, This is all going to be things that they put on the table. I don't really see talking about they deserve attention. I mean, I don't see that the VC will actually take this information that PCP exists and, and, and PPI and all that, and then they, they will actually go out and, and distribute that amongst potential companies. I, that way around, it doesn't, it doesn't yeah. seem to work. No, I no, mean, no. It, it, are the bidders, in fact, they, they deserve the, the, your attention. It's not uh, us. In fact, it's the, are the bidders bidding to this uh, the new... Companies, yes, the, the companies, the companies, when they're looking for venture the supplier, capital, yeah. they will actually, they will take that. And, and now the question is when, in my mind, whether um, a company that pitches to a VC whether it's a pro or a con that they actually have this kind of um, uh, funding attached to them. Now, there are a few very nice things about this thing. Cash is, of course, always nice. Everybody likes cash, right? I mean, I made a list. Uh, there's, this is like the, the biggest single, single biggest thing is that the client is on the, on the table. I mean, you, you bring somebody with interest. So that is really, really important uh, from, from any investor's uh, position. Uh, you also 
you know, you have a guaranteed learning curve in a sense because, you know, you get direct feedback, you co-develop this. So there is a few very, very nice, uh, interesting things. Of course, you can establish a standard in an industry, right? We have had a few uh, examples, yours, for example, that is very, very strongly dependent on that establishing itself as an industry standard. So for that kind of thing, this is probably a con. Yeah. Uh, sorry, a pro. A pro, a pro. A pro. <laughs> for other things, yeah, I don't want to, now you're awake. But uh, for other things, this is, less, this is less clear. And on the other hand, you know, an investor or a VC in particular will also look at a lot of other ways how this impacts um, the, their, their particular, uh, their particular um, uh, business. And um, there's a whole list for that. I'm sure we're getting to that in a yeah. second, right? Yeah, thank you. Um, in the interest of time, and uh, amazingly it's rushing past, I'll skip a, through a few. Um, but let me, can I just really put you on the spot? You just heard a presentation about a lot of PCP and PPI projects that are either planned or underway. How many of those made you jump up and go, I'd invest in a company that's doing that? <laughs> You're allowed to say zero. <laughs> no one's going to cry. <laughs> This is, you will never hear a yes from, I mean, first of all, yeah, okay. as a general disclaimer, I'm, I'm not a venture capitalist, right? We got that in the introduction for those, uh, but um, I work with them a lot. Um, I, I think there might, there, are so, there, there were a couple of projects that, that you would probably want to look at at the, at the exact business case, but that comes back to what you said earlier, that how good is the public at making a business case and describing it. So there, there is, I think there were a couple of projects there which might be, which might be interesting. But that's great because you're and saying... you're asking me which ones. No, I'm not. No, I'm, but, but you're establishing the principle that a P PCP may have some investment potential. That's great. <laughs> um, one of the other bits of feedback we got when talking to the investor community is, is, you know, PCP. Have you heard of it? And they go, no, first I've heard about it was when you approached me, which I guess shouldn't be surprising. But what do you do? Is it, is it for the public? We've just touched on this, but is it for the public body to approach investors or is it actually for the companies? Would, I'm, I'm guessing, and please confirm or otherwise, that if a company came to you and said, I have this opportunity... It's co it might be co-financed because it depends where they start talking to you in the PCP process. Does, does, does it, the fact it's a company approach you carry any more weight? Uh, my first thing, with, if, if I get approached with this, uh, would be um, get, sh tell the guy with the opportunity uh, he just present his business case to me. It comes I mean, back to the business case every time. I don't... I don't at the VC, unless the money is directly for the VC and you give them money and they invest it, they they don't really uh, yeah. they don't really care. I mean, it, what in other words, they will they will say, hey, you know, if you if you have an interesting project, you know, send it my way. We all love deal flow, right? Quality deal flow is a, is, a, is an important thing. But I don't think they as a, as such, and then especially when the detail becomes as it happens to be with uh, lawyers and and uh, European. Uh, procurement provisions, when it becomes complicated, the VC, sh you know, after the first, after the third paragraph, he's probably already gone. I mean, right. yeah, yeah I just, just would pick up that on that very quickly as well. Um, I, I personally really don't, don't believe in newsletters and websites and dis dissemination in general, which is a big word in European projects usually. It's actually one of the evaluation criteria always. But um, if picking up on what Javier Castillo said this morning, which, uh, which um, I think is one of the main issues here, is that if you compare Europe to, to America, we're sort of missing a, 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 an ecosystem here, um, an industrial ecosystem. Because if you look at the, I, in, at the US, if you're an investor and you wanna, you're interested in investing in ICT, you go to certain places. You, you, you hang around in MIT. You hang around Stanford. You know, that's where things are happening. Um, that's not really something we have here. I don't think mm, by doing sort of an, an institutional top-down push you can, you can generate something like that, right? So um, I think that's one, one of the issues, is, issues we have. We should try to build something like that, probably. You're, you're not suggesting you go and hang around Brussels, are you? <laughs> you hit the nail on the head, yeah. Not, not for innovation, anyway. I, I think there is, there is a lot of good innovation. Uh, we've had this, somebody mentioned this morning, that the research coming out of Europe um, is actually quite good. Um, and there are, of course, hubs and places which, are very, very, which have a very dense, um, uh, high density of, of interesting opportunities. Unfortunately, most of, or many of those are not inside the European Union, but in associated countries. Um, the, 
So I, th I think there is, there is opportunity. I think it is very, very important uh, that um, the public procurement does get some, some, some funding into this system because this is so important to get the client. Uh, and, and, but there are, lots, there are really some precautionary things when I, when I listen to all this that on how you can actually um, destroy the opportunity you're trying to create. Um, and, you know, some of those um, um, are related to the, to the timeline, okay? Like, first of all, it is very, very long from a, from a, from a venture perspective. And secondly, it's, 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 a, it's a fixed uh, timeline. So one of the biggest in, uh, advantages that startups can create is actually speed. Now here, you're basically saying, I don't care whether you come up with a great solution in a month or in two months, because the next deadline is in five or six or what I mean so there is a you're basically not allowing them to capitalize on one of their biggest advantages which is to be very very fast in creating things now I'm not sure how, to what degree that can be changed I'm just describing it from a from a from a venture from a startup and therefore from a venture capital perspective as a as a fact another thing I understand the, the intention of having you know procurement bodies from different countries but look at it from the eyes of an investor this is uh, sorry of, a, of an investor but for a startup these being the same in this perspective. This is not a promise, this is a threat. If I have to deal with six clients in six different countries for a company that is trying to roll out a technology, you want to start rolling out in one case, preferably one hospital or one country, and sort of get on your feet and then make sure that you roll out. So it's nice to know that they're there. It's nice to know what their interests are for later in the process so you can think a little bit ahead. But you, cannot, you, you can kill, um, a, especially a small company, with the kind of work that is required in dealing with an Italian, um, a uh, um, Finnish, and uh, I don't know, a Romanian uh, a entity at the same time, and then there are public entities on top of it. So you know, this is this is very very difficult. So there's a lot of, of these things where I think the basic idea is very very interesting and makes a lot of sense. But from a from a from an entrepreneur's perspective, it's important not to not to uh, not to do damage, do no harm, kind of thing. Any thoughts? Well, regarding uh, this last comment, um, we we already had a pre <laughs> a pre session, so <laughs> I'm just going to highlight what I highlighted the other day. I completely uh, see this point, and it's in fact it's interesting um, because this is clearly comp a point of view from a, from an SME is is is, is clearly an interesting. Uh, factor. On the other side, from again a healthcare provider, uh, especially taking into account the one of the most uh, um, critical part in healthcare sector is that we are really fragmented, not only across Europe but also across our own regions, our own uh, cities, our own uh, really hospitals. That we have different systems; they don't talk each other. Uh, having the fact that we try to get more procurers uh, together in one batch um, uh, somehow push us to boost, uh, again, the industry to deliver something that is standard, interoperable, and we are not, at the end of the day, locked in with just one vendor. Then we cannot, uh, after 10 years, recover our data because we are locked in completely. So for us also, it's, it's important. Not only it's important, we, we offer an opportunity, I would say, to our SMEs, if they are flexible enough, competent enough to, uh, to, to deliver what we ask for, um, to really uh, uh, already uh, go beyond the market because they will be so competitive thanks to the fact that they are providing standard products that for them it will be easier then to deploy to the next customer. So again, it's true, long, long time. Long, long, I see clearly this. This is something that uh, for me, um, uh, I'm, already obs I'm also obsessed by this because uh, when we des define our project, the, um, the timing was not uh, where we are, uh, what we are experiencing. So it's not something that we want, uh, and we are finding ourselves. But also it's our first project, so no, 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 you I, know we are just, also learning I know, about I know, this. And I, and I, as I said, <laughs> I think, uh, I think the, the initiative is great. I just think you, the, the, the basic line is you have to reduce the complexity from the, if you want to involve small companies, startup companies, companies that don't have, a, uh, somebody mentioned an administrative <laughs> department earlier, companies that don't have that. If you want to involve them, you have to keep the complexity really, really low and not make it 
uh, complicated, not make it like, uh, you know, like they have to travel around and meet customers here and there and everywhere. They basically want one interface uh, with, with the whole group of clients, preferably in one country uh, where they can actually uh, roll out and, and, and do these things. And um, you, this, this, the discussion with the IP rights, uh, I've been following this uh, throughout the morning. That's another thing. I'm sorry, but uh, everybody <laughs> likes to pick on lawyers. I mean, <laughs> my wife's a lawyer, so I mean, you know. So um, the, the IP rights situation, just get rid of it. You, don't, you are going to be stakeholders anyway uh, as, a public, as, a, as, a, as a public. We're all stakeholders of the success of the companies in our, in our uh, place. So the, the point to get back from a startup is not by, by getting a foot into the door on their IP rights. Not because it's, it's maybe, it may be fair or it may be not fair, but because it increases the complexity of what has to be negotiated, what has to be put on paper. Companies are going to be really extremely reluctant to, to look at anything like that. Even if, it doesn't, even if you try to make it fair, it's just one thing that is sort of can blow a lot of good companies away. And this brings me to my final point. And I'm yeah. done. That you have to be sure that you don't make rules that basically give you negative uh, self-selection. In other words, that the best companies do not apply. And the worst ones that need, that need money and don't find it in the, public mar in the private market are actually the ones applying. So keep it simple. Make it really straightforward so that, that small comp if you want small companies to participate that don't have legal departments and don't have that, all this, 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 this infrastructure, uh, make it really, really simple. Port of last resort, negative selection. Good point. Um, the conversation has flowed very nicely through the slide process, and don't even need to show that. Just, I would be interested, if, if you're, we're all aware we can draw this picture in our mind of the PCP PPI flowchart. From an investment point of view, then, I'm sensing, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm sensing that really uh, an investor probably would only be interested at, with a company that's at phase three wouldn't want to be interested at phase one, far too risky, far too long time scales. They're the things we've said. Is that right? Mm, no, I think I would disagree, actually. Um, uh, again, I think there's different types of investors. There are definitely investors that would be more interested to, to come into phase three, but even in phase three, you still have a, a good chance of not making it to the PPI or, or, or not making it to a contract in the end. Um, but I s definitely see, especially my type of investor, the, the really small-time investors, um, you could actually be interested in a company that, has, that is just starting. And I'm thinking of, I'm sp actually is specifically thinking of a very specific type of company, which is the spin-offs. So not only startups, but um, companies that are uh, spinning off from a university so, um, or, or a, a research institution, so they already know this, they already have this, dynamics, uh, public, public uh, funding dynamics in a way. Uh, so they're not too scared of it. Um, they need it. That's another thing. Um, so I see that as an interesting target for phase one entries. And, and uh, if you're a small-time investor, so you, you have maybe only 10,000 euros to invest or something like that, which is a bit my profile, um, that, is a, that gives you a lot of leverage. The thing I would look at in that case is, can I pivot? Um, so, you know, somewhere down the line at phase two or phase three, I, th I see things are not going the way, you know, in this particular setup, things are not going the way I imag imagined it. I want to be able to pivot and do something else. tell them what pivoting is. Ah, pivoting. It means you just do something else. You start <laughs> doing something else, right? <laughs> it's, it's startups. Startups love to change their business model. There's almost yeah. no startup that doesn't change what they are thinking between the first time they get together and write a business plan and when they finally are big in the market that doesn't change completely what they're actually setting out to do. Yeah. And this is called pivoting. And if you have a process which is very much structured and basically takes you through the next three years of your company life and if you change something, you're, getting, you're, you're kicked out of the race because you have signed a legal document, uh, that's, then that prohibits yeah. you from pivoting. Show me a man with a five-year plan and I'll show you an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> So, so, sorry, just, just a question. So, well, um, what do you think? It could be a good idea, so uh, get involved, uh, people like you with your profile, evaluating the, the different bidders from, uh, from the very start or, or not? What do you think? I know that, Hans, maybe you have already an opinion, but Philippe, what do you think? And then Hans also. I mean, um, the first 
question, of course, is can you design a, a system? Can you design a flow which actually takes into account all the things which are important to the companies? And my guess is it's difficult because um, there are lots of parameters that I'm sure everybody, if we, even if we all agree here, we cannot, we cannot change. Um, uh, the evaluation part is just, is just one, of those, uh, one of those things. Of course, and if you take industry experts early on and they help you actually decide which companies have a, a business perspective, mm -hmm. yeah? that, of course, uh, that of course helps, yes. Mm. Actually, I would like to take a step back. And because um, I've been sounding maybe very critical of all this up to now, but um, uh, but I, I do see a lot of merit to this as well. And I think one of our handicaps is simply that we don't have any experience with this. Um, so I, I would be really interesting, interested to sit here maybe ten years from now, or maybe a little bit less, maybe five or seven years from now, and see what investors think then. You know, because there are there are definitely um, merits to this. So. Thank you, everybody. Can I move this to a wrap and do a bit of X factor and ask the jury to vote? Um, we've, here are the, some of the things we've spoken about. Can I just mark them uh, in you? Can I get your opinion on marks out of 10 about how important they are? If I just run, just literally with your gut, shout a number out for the, the lack of awareness of PCP. Is that important? Eight. For an investor? Yeah. One. <laughs> really? Okay, I'm going to have That's to average this. <laughs> <laughs> so now we're going to be we're going to be discussing for another hour. <laughs> okay. The the sectorial mismatch. We didn't actually touch on that as such, but a lot of investors, especially at the VC stage, have a, a, a technology sector or a specific focus. Is that important? Will will they stick to their own particular knowledge area? I would have thought the answer would be yes. Yes. Well, they stick to their own, uh, but if, if they happen to invest in this space, then it's great. I mean, it's, it's great if it's right. And it's if it's a, great it's, if it's right, but it's, you will not move somebody from another field to normally invest in... So it, it's, it's a binary else. barrier. Mm -hmm. yeah. the, the market size issue, public sector market size, is that a, a, a barrier or not? That depends on the project. I think that's, a, that's one of, for me, one of the big advantages of, of, of this kind of initiative, that it allows you to relatively quickly occupy enough space for, for systems which, which, which live on scale. So um, you'd, you'd mark it as a low barrier? It would be a positive for me, so the inverse a of a barrier. Of a <laughs> Negative number. Um, mm -hmm. Possible return on investment, or likely return on investment, so I had a question about that, actually. How, how is that so different from market size? Of course, it's a different thing, but uh, doesn't it tie into each other very strongly? They are, they're clearly related, but I, I could sell you one thing at a huge markup or a lot of things at a very low markup. Mm -hmm. there, is a, there is one big thing here, and I think this is important. Um, of course, when several, several, several procurers get together, what they're actually pre pre creating is a, is, a, is a buying monopoly. Yeah? And... You have to be sure, and that gives you a lot of negotiating power, and you, are, you must be sure not to use that negotiating power. I mean, it sounds, it sounds bizarre, but you actually, are, you, 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 from a, from a, you must be willing to overpay and make sure that these get, the guys who win this, they get really, really, really rich in the process and, you know, and not use the fact that you're the only guy in the room, the only potential client in the room, to make sure that even the winner actually walks away with, you know, a nice little salary. I mean... You have to accept that the winners in something like this who have gone through all of this, they walk away f richer than any of us here in the room, all right? Presumably. Okay. And, and do you believe the public sector mindset can support that? And I think that is exactly, yeah, that's where I'm a little bit uh, doubtful because I, as much as the argument makes sense, I mean, even in the private sector, that is sometimes very difficult for people to see that others walk away with like what looks like ridiculous amounts of money in the individual basis. But if you actually spread it out over the risk taken by all parties in this process, it does, isn't actually that much. But the, mi the mindset to accept that is very, very difficult. And as I said earlier, I think a public body will probably get shot if they, if they allowed uh, a, 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 a company a 20 times return uh, on their money. I mean. So that you, you've actually also started edging into the, you know, the perception, an investor's perception of the public sector mm -hmm. as a market. You know, it, it, it's, I'm hearing it's not an attractant. I, that, that I wouldn't go so far. I think this, this, the, the, the hospitals and so on, I mean, obviously, it, you mentioned the 80%. I mean, of course, if you want to be in this space, you have to accept that the public is a market. Um, 
there are still ways to get rich in this, in this kind of field. It's just you have to make sure that, especially in this thing, when all the procurers get together, that you actually don't use the power that you're getting by this. It's not, if somebody finds a cure for, uh, or finds a fantastic medical device and starts selling it, you know, that reduces costs of the healthcare sector being the typical one, of course you can get really rich. So the public sector is not a, is not a negative per se. And the, the, the timing, you touched on the timing. You know, should, what's your gut feeling as a, as a, a number out of 10 for that? Hmm. that? Timing is an issue because it's, it's fairly long. Um, yeah, so the PC, I'm mainly looking at, at the PCP here, but the PCP um, timeline is fairly long um, compared to, you know, um, the, the, the typical timeline of a startup. Um, so is it a onesie, twosie issue or is it an eight, eightsie, nineesie issue? But um, but again, but here's where also this famous pivoting thing comes in. I mean, if if you're a company that's good at pivoting, and you see that you know this is not going anywhere, and you're right. still in time to to change course, then this probably doesn't. It, then it's probably relative. But but yeah, it, it's a high mark. I would say yeah, right. it is a high mark. Yeah, I agree. I think it's a very high mark. It depends a little bit on the kind of. Uh, the kind of technology, whether it has what the development cycle is. Uh, there are technologies which have a five-year cycle or something that probably wouldn't be such a big issue, but for, for faster-moving things, I think it's a 10 for me. And, and in terms of you know, your day-to-day -day work, you know, are, you short of, are you short of opportunities? Did PCP go, wow, here's, here's how I can fill my Wednesdays? <laughs> <laughs> I gave this a very low mark because I think an investor looks at any opportunity. Right. Um, so whether it's PCP or not, even whether it's public se sector or not in the end, I think that's very, that has very relative An opportunity is relevance. an opportunity. Yeah, exactly. Okay. I, I agree. I think this is, the whole PCP issue is, is going to be more interesting for the, cli for the kind of client access, and it's, but it depends on the project. I don't think it's a huge factor. Thank you. Um, and any other, you know, comments that the slide set hasn't given you an opportunity to bring out, and throw it out to the audience. Do those do those X factor marks feel about right to you? Does anybody violently disagree with any of those? No one's sticking their hand up to say they disagree. Just nod your head if you vaguely agree. <laughs> Okay. I think there's something, there's something missing, which is the administrative uh, complexity and what oh, it actually, yes. actually it means for the company to actually enter in this thing. And if it actually locks you down in forever in, in this kind of paper war stuff, uh, that would be a big no-no. Um, mm -hmm. um, and also, yeah, the, the other issue, we touched on those issues, the, the intellectual property rights, the, um, um, and then also one thing which is missing here is how big is the funding? I mean, I look at these numbers. If you're talking about an angel, that is great money, good leverage. If you talk mm -hmm. about the VC, you're, this is totally on, on, on the margin. I mean, this is, from a VC perspective, this is not significant money. And it's not going, if, if this, from a VC perspective now, yeah? If this means I'm getting a public body in the room that will make me go through legal processes and, and, and fixed schedules and, and all mm -hmm. sorts of reviews and, and, and all the rest of it, and then I have to share my IP when I'm done, that that is that would definitely be on my list with a very high with a very high <laughs> grade. How much do you actually get for the money that you put uh, on the table? And if it's not an enormous amount of money, then you you don't get much to say in the end of the day. Gentlemen, lady, thank you very much very indeed.